Hey everyone, Dolphin Oracle here again today, checking out the latest release of Antics, Antics 17. Uh, I'm look, using the 64-bit uh, full version on my ThinkPad T530 off of a USB 3 live USB system. So yeah, this is running live on, on the Antics live USB. Before I get into what's new on Antics 17, people always ask me what's why what makes Annex different from other distributions one of the things that makes Annex dis different is is extensive live USB features nobody's got more live USB features uh, than Annex uh, even puppy the great puppy Linux um, uh, it's 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 like going puppy and then going three times three miles further down the road it's it's just got more options we also in M17 have are rolling out a more extensive console support. So if you just want to run without X, anti X, if you want to run without X uh, or a window manager or anything, you can do that. And we have extensive tools that will probably will also come on the Antics Core ISO, which doesn't have an X environment. It's just the command line to start with. Um, has a lot of tools for that. I'll be showing some of those off for you. The other thing that makes Antics different is it is system D free. Um, a lot of people, uh, the Antics developers uh, included, uh, are um, resisting the change to System D, so to speak. Uh, and in, despite that fact, Antics is still based on Debian, not DevOn or Dev1 or whatever the heck you say. Say those guys. And also, Antics, you know, is a lot of fun, and it's a window manager operating system, and it's not based on OpenBox. If you can go out there into the uh, Manharo and Arch world and see people running a lot of lightweight distributions, and they inevitably will throw OpenBox on it. Well, there's nothing wrong with OpenBox. I don't care. But if you want something different, come over to the Antics side of things. We have ISWM is the default window manager. My window manager right here on my screen is Fluxbox. We also have JWM, which you probably know because Puppy Linux has been based on JWM for you know forever and a day. Like I say, I'm running on the live USB stick right now, so let's let's crack open a few things and see what's new. Uh, the main menu here is not much different, and you can see the installers on the menu. That's because I am running on the live USB. I could run the installer and install to this computer, but I'm running it off the USB stick because honestly, the USB stick I have here is really really large, and with the persistence features and some of the other cool features, I'll show you uh, if I get probably in a different video. Uh, you can really take a system with not much in the way of physical hardware and run it off the USB stick and have a really great experience. Particularly, USB 2 is fine, but particularly if you have a USB 3 port. Um, uh, you know, this, this little netbook, this little EPC netbook, only has a USB 2. It runs fine uh, on there, and the 32-bit version of Antics runs just fine on this. Uh, I have another netbook that runs a 64-bit Celeron, and that really like and it has a USB 3 port and it's really nice on that system. It's actually the USB 3 is actually faster than the inter the cheap internal p components that came in that netbook. Okay, so we're going to crack open the control center cuz that's where a lot of the new things that you'll see right off the bat are. <laughs> on the desktop here, on the desktop tab, we see we have tabs over here on the side. On the desktop tab, you got choosing wallpapers, setting your console DPI, which is a fun one because it lets you set a uh, multiplier for higher DPI screens. So if you if you have a higher DPI screen, you can try this, and it'll kind of scale everything up. And including the Antics Conky over here will scale as well. At least it should. Uh, you have quick links to editing your window manager settings and your GTK themes. That's the themes inside the windows. Remember, window manager themes are separate from GTK themes. So window manager themes are these borders around the perimeter. GTK is inside. <laughs> You got lots to choose from, and they're they're pretty nice. Uh, what we got here, Arc, I guess, is what's set to right now. Uh, also, if you happen to be running uh, JWM and Flexbox, you got links to those as well. You can edit your system monitor conky file. There it goes. Opens in the Genie text editor, which is the default text editor for Annex. And you'll see on the menu here in Applications, we have several items. Let's see, we have several items in the top level menu: Terminal, File Manager, Web Browser, Editor. <laughs> These are quick links that you can set with the preferred applications button. And you can set these to whatever you want, navigate your file system, and choose a desktop file. 
to have those quick links work whatever you know if you want to use leafpad or if you want to use you know you, one of the other terminals uh, feel free okay, so manage packages will take you to the synaptic panic manager no problem there everybody's in the debian world seen synaptic package installer is new to annex 17 this time around this is actually a, a modification of the mx package installer pop the popular applications tab and you can uh, you know get your extra stuff that you want uh, that's maybe installed or not installed on uh, your Annex system. Uh, there's some different things here. Screencast, we got OBS and Simple Screen Recorder. So there's some things in there that you might want to get. And like I say, that's new. To and like I said, that replaces the older uh, Meta Package installer that was used in past releases. You can set your system keyboard here with the uh, the keyboard layouts tool. This will also run when you run the installer the first time. So if you didn't do it on the live boot, and I'll show you those options here in a few minutes. Uh, you can do it that way. You can choose your startup services, set your date and time, and do some different things with setting the uh, alternative system. Setting up your network connection is pretty easy with Cine. This operates. A lot of people misunderstand Cine. Cine is an editor that creates a a, a profile in slash etsy slash network slash interfaces and that's what this tool does that and it's the fastest way to get online um, maybe not quite so convenient if you're jumping networks all the time but if you're on one network all the time this is a really fast way to configure your system configures both your landline and your wireless although your landline's probably going to work out of the box um, I really like this tool it's fast it comes up faster than wicked or ycd however you want to say that it comes up way faster than network manager uh, which isn't in antics, but which we deal with in MX. So, you know, give Cine a try. Don't sell it short just because it's a console app. It's pretty nice. Besides Cine, you've got your other network uh, items you might like, need to use. Like, you can use YCD if you want to, or Wicked. I don't know how you want to say it. Some other things if you're still on dial up, and also uh, managing your firewall with our firewall tool here. This is the uh, uncomplicated firewall. And then the ad block, which is actually configured by default, but you can unconfigure it if you. Oops, I hit it twice. Uh, if you want, you can uh, unblock everything. But right now, everything comes blocked, I do believe. Shares lets you use the Connect Share system. You've probably seen my videos on Connect Shares. Check them out. I'll try to throw a link up there so that you can check those out. It's still a super easy way to get online, uh, to get on your Samba shares in particular, but also NFS shares. Although I don't. I don't deal with those very much because I'm on a, a Windows shared network at home, so I tend to use Connect Shares to connect to that. And also a cool little tool called Droopy to uh, to uh, help you uh, set up an impromptu web server for quick file transfers. Now under session, we start getting some special stuff here. You can you can again change your keyboard layouts, your slim backgrounds. That's your login screen. It's hard to show that while I'm recording, but the login screen where you type your username and password, you can change the background there. Boot image, grub boot image, that's your bootloader image. Uh, and you can edit your desktop session settings. There's all sorts of things in here. The startup has startup files that you might like. Like if you, if you want the clipboard editor, you can uncomment this to have clip at start. If you want the YCD client, you can uncomment that. Uh, I added this. I'm using a uh, quick launcher called Cupfer that forum members Skidoo turned me on to. Uh, that's pretty nice. And you can also comment out the auto mount annex system if you don't like the auto mounting. Um, and also our volume icon down here in the bottom. Uh, most of these others are configuration files for the different tools in annex. There are GUIs available. Desktopsession.conf though lets you set some different things. And it's all commented very well. And you can check that out. You can have a startup sound. You can have, uh, you know, different dialogues. You can have conky start by start or not start and you can actually have it obey the load xdg auto start system which is the <sighs> in your home folder there's a dot config folder inside that is uh, auto start most window manager based operating systems like openbox that use like openbox or flexbox or jwm they'll ignore that folder uh, but antics can use its desktop session system to comply with the XGG auto start specification. So if you have tools that say, hey, let's set me to auto start, like say Dropbox, that will work without having to set up any tools. Okay, so uh, again, so we got some other over things here, and this is a configuration file for the auto mount system, which is also configurable in another tab. 
live. This is a system for setting up uh, persistence and live boot features. I'll be showing off more of these off in another video uh, covering the live USB system a little more uh, in depth. Under disks, like I said, you can configure auto mounting and, and, and how and what you want to open when things happen. Kind of like the XFCE uh, volume management tool, but simpler. Uh, you've got a link to the installer. You've got our Create Live USB tool. Oh, you, you see that I launched it, and it's saying, hey, you can clone the running live system if you want to. Yes, I can, because I'm running live USB. I don't need the ISO on the USB stick. All I need is another USB, and I can clone the running system onto that stick. Again, I'll show you that at another time. <laughs> and the imaging partition syncing directories is an rsync uh, tool, and partitioning drive is your link to Gparted. And you got test sound and set, set the sound card. You see I've got two because I got my Yeti plugged in. Usually I only have one, but I can I can show you this with my Yeti plugged in because it shows up as a sound card. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. Yes, really quick because I don't want to screw up the sound card. Uh, configuring the mouse. This is our mouse setting tool, uh, which is uh, very nice. And now so you can test the sound. I hope you can hear that. It goes through the loop a couple, three times. And new, also new to Annex is the backlight feature, where I can set the backlight. Now, I don't know if this is going to come out in the video, but my, back, my backlight is going up and down. And that setting is saved between boots, so that's a pretty nice uh, feature that a lot of uh, window manager-only systems don't have. You've got links to the NVIDIA driver installer here, which is new for stretch-based Antix family distros, and also a link to a Recodex installer, which... Honestly, you probably don't need, except it's going to install, um, if you like to do DVDs, it'll install the library for DVDs. You almost don't need the other codecs anymore. Uh, and then some maintenance stuff, creating a snapshot for your system, boot repair, which now also works with uh, UEFI. You can edit your menus, add things to your personal menu or the applications menu. I've got a video on that. Check it out if you want to see it. Ding! There's another link. Uh, you got the Annex User Manager for creating users and managing your users. And a tool for network troubleshooting, which is really can be really handy, especially if you've got blocked Wi-Fi devices. <sighs> I can't tell you how many times a system from Windows, they turn off the wireless on Windows and it actually flips some BIOS switch somewhere and the hardware turns off. It's, it's annoying. Um, hello, the EPC actually does that. If you turn off the wireless in Windows with the, with, with the EPC utility stuff, it actually turns. It actually disables the wireless and BIOS. Now this EPC, I can turn it back on and BIOS. But we're running across more and more systems where you can't. You actually have to have the the, the original utility to turn it back on. It's really annoying. <clears throat> and a system backup and a uh, backup tool. This is Lucky Backup. Yeah, this is for backing up data files and such. So that's what's new in the. Well, some of that was new. Some of that was old in the control center. But the control center is one of those things in Antics that's really really nice. Really really special. So one of the new things uh, that you didn't see in the control center is a new tool called CLI Aptics. It's a control, it's a terminal or console package manager. So let's see here. Let's see. I think it's in system tools. Uh, boot manager. Command line based app based package manager. Okay. Do I want to run app? Nah, I just did a little while ago. So here it shows me I have package upgrades and I can view the packages to upgrade. And there they are one per line that seems pretty useful all right cue to quit and I can ignore the upgrades for now or I can go ahead and do it now in the purpose of this video I'm not going to do it I'm just going to ignore it right now and I can search for packages to mark or install and, and this goes through you go through and you mark which ones you want and you can do the app get all at once you don't have to pick one package at a time there's also suggested command line packages and there's suggested GUI packages so that's pretty cool um, that they're suggested by, let's see what we got. So, oh, they're rated by stars. Well, that's kind of interesting. Uh, view all 40 suggested packages. Let's see. Use the up and down arrows. So here we go. So what you do is you get your list. You, you remember the numbers you want. Let's say I'm going to remember, uh, uh, let's see, I see audio, video, audacious. I'm going to remember audacious. So that's 11. And let's go ahead and get Audacity too. That's 12. So I'm going to quit out of this. And it says enter the number of each package you want to install. And I'm going to do 11 and 12. And that tells me Audacious 
and Audacity. I can mark them to mark two selected packages. Uh, so you yeah, can go through all that again. Uh, view or install the two packages. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Install all two marked packages. Yes, I'll go ahead and install them. And now it's going to tell me that there's dependencies. Do I want to install this with all the dependencies? I'm going to stop now because after I say yes now, it will actually go through the install and it'll take a few minutes. So that's pretty cool. There's all sorts of things in here. You can search for Annex kernels. It'll give you uh, the kernels from the Antix family because Antix does roll its own kernels. Uh, and also you can search for all kernels. You can update. You do an app to get update. It's a very nice tool. It's brand new, so if you try it out, uh, throw up some comments in the forums. Let us know how you like it. I really like it. It's a, I think it's a nice addition to Antics. Like I said, there's a lot of new features. In fact, I'm going to show you just a couple here real quick in the console. But to do that, i got to fire up VirtualBox. Yeah, you heard that right. I'm, going to, I'm about to fire up VirtualBox on a live USB stick. Holy jamoly. Okay, so I'm firing up the ISO for the Antic 17 disk. This is actually an older disk. This is the RC1 disk, so don't uh, don't worry about it. It's just one I had laying around. So we come through, and we got all the usual live USB options that you've come to expect. But in the F4 menu, we have some new ones. Auto mount and no auto mount has been set up so that you can turn off auto mounting before you ever boot. Uh, you could also do the same thing with YCD and no YCD. No, y, no YCD is actually the default. If you want YCD, you know you want it, just go ahead and click the thing. We also have these con widths, <laughs> uh, excuse me, these con widths, which control the number of columns wide your console is. What this means is when you, when you actually, when you boot, there's actually a, uh, the console windows are actually themed, and you get a theme that matches your console. Uh, also, it controls the font size of the console a little bit. So I'll show you that in another video. I'm not set up for it right now, but I'll show you that in another video. And then on the console menu, you can set the size that you actually want your console to be when it boots up. Uh, again, features you don't normally see. If you don't need a console, these don't mean anything to you. But if you're like, hey, man, I really like the attention you're paying to the console, great. I'm glad you like it. There's one other item that goes into the console features, and I'll show it in a console video. There's actually a console-oriented control center. It's really, really nice. It's got a lot of functionality. And if you install some of the suggested command line packages, console packages, it actually expands the functionality quite a bit. And we're going to show that in another video. But trust me, that is brand new. Um, in fact, let me see. I think I can do that. I'm going to put a three. I'm going to cheat put a three there. See, here's our here's our, our theme here. I may lose it in VirtualBox. I don't remember if it sticks around. It sticks around on my hardware. It doesn't stick around in VirtualBox. <clears throat> So demo, demo, and we have the antics. It even tells you the command, CLI, CC. Actually, if you just hit the up arrow, I think, yeah, the up arrow, it's in the, it's in the history already. So just hit the up arrow, and you get the control center. And you get a lot of the same things you get in the regular control center, but you also have some things that are console oriented. You got the poor man's radio player, you got a YouTube jukebox, the console version of MPV, uh, you got a mock video player, and you can do some stuff. Set, set your sound card. The speaker test is here. You can burn CDs with CDW. Actually, I like CDW is probably my favorite CD burner of any tool. You got all the internet tools you you could ask for. News readers, torrent clients. I mean, I mean there's I mean, there's a, there's a text web browser for crying out loud. I mean, if you can't get it done with this system, you're not trying hard enough. <laughs> You can install your NVIDIA drivers for later use in X. It works just fine from the console. Uh, you can get to the CLI aptics, which I already showed off, and some other system level tools. You can get your information about your system, HTOP, INXI, to run informa get information. You can run parted to view and edit disk partitions. I mean, nobody else has a console-based uh, control center like this, at least not the distros that are aimed towards desktop users. <laughs> oh, excuse me. You can edit your snapshot exclude lists and whatnot in your FS tab, your file system tabulate tab table. Uh, you got the live tools for up taking care of your live system tools. Oh, including DD live USB, which will use DD to burn a burn a tool. You got some console utilities. You can set your you can set your your splash theme. That's that border that flashed briefly on the screen. Um, 
I need to avoid doing that right now while I'm running because it, it doesn't like it for some reason uh, while I'm running the uh, video c capture. Uh, console width, you, it helps you choose the font and the font size, these two utilities. And also colors, and also you can play Space Invaders. If you ever played Space Invaders on a basic computer back in the day, well, there you go. Bye bye. Live it to your heart's content. Just a little fun, little extra there. Uh, Office, you got actually got some console Office tools. We got a word processor, Midnight Commander, File Manager. There's a calendar. Whoops. There's a calendar. There's Nano and Vim, and your log out and install options. So, and I'm gonna power down the uh, live USB. So that is a lot of what's new. Like I say, we'll be doing uh, straight up videos on the enhanced live USB features and on the console features. Hopefully I'll break them down, make them a little bit more uh, easier to digest than this what's new video, but there was a lot going on. And so there's a lot to show off. Again, still Debian based, still system D free, still the best live, literally live USB system on the planet. Uh, give Annex a try. When you come to Annex, the biggest one of the biggest problems folks come when they come to Annex is they expect Annex to work like other distros that just use window managers. And with the desktop session system, with all the live USB features, I think you can quickly see that there's an Annex way to doing things, and if you just kind of embrace it, you can really have a unique experience. This is Dolphin Oracle signing off. Have a great night.